Okay, kiddos, welcome back to our little quick brief introduction to periodic trends because you're going to be doing an inquiry on this in class that I'm going to be helping you with. So let's move forward. Um, we were talking about an atomic radius and the trend is, and believe it or not, I know it's hard to believe you learned this or at least memorized it long enough to take a test on it in pre-AP chemistry. Now, there's what we want to look is at, at the justifications. That's you know what you're going to have to be giving on your tests. They'll, you will be asked what is a trend and you'll be asked to justify it. Well, as you go down a group, your outer electrons are entering higher energy levels. And because they are entering higher energy levels, the higher the N, the further it is from the nucleus. So you could envision your nucleus being down here much further than I'm able to draw it. And if it ends here, like in say hydrogen, you've got that much, much further away than those that end out in three and four and out in five. Now, um, the other thing you want to note is this is a key word. You, and in fact, I be, I've even seen questions where they've asked you to draw this. These energy levels get closer and closer and closer together. So we say they converge. So as we look at differences, in other words, the difference between these two elements is bigger than the difference between these two elements. So as we get further and further away, the differences in size become smaller and smaller. You'll have your greatest difference in size between here and here, and then they get tinier and tinier and tinier, the differences between two elements. So if you look at your periodic table, the difference in atomic radius between rubidium and cesium is going to mu be much less than the difference between lithium and sodium, okay? Now, we also have another justification with this that we have to include, and you need both, not just one. You want to strengthen all right, your case. That's two words, justification two, okay? Um, when electrons are far away from the nucleus, so electrons that are way out here don't feel the same attraction as electrons that are very, very close. And that's due to shielding. The inner core electrons shield. So if you're ever talking about a group, Throw in that word shielding, and you're likely to get some points. I want you to understand it more than I want you to get points, but still. So the core electrons, remember, shield. So all electrons down here shield those outer electrons from feeling the full attractive force. So that does not feel the full Z. This feels the full Z. This feels what we call Z effective okay not a feeling as in happiness but a feeling as attraction so core electrons shield the outer valence electrons from feeling the full effect of the nucleus okay now as we go to atomic radius next um across a period so if we want to go across a period all right, this is very much related to that um, proton to electron radius we were talking about, but now we're just comparing atoms, and we saw this picture earlier. I was showing you a picture much like this to show you that the energy of emission for lines in lithium has a different energy and hence a different wavelength as the lines in fluorine. And it's because as you go across here, lithium has a plus three charge and fluorine has a plus nine attractive force to it. So the nearest electrons are going to feel a much stronger attraction to that plus nine than they are going to feel down to that plus three of lithium. 
So you can think of it as fluorine hugs in its electrons a little tighter. So since they are closer to the nucleus, it's electrons, outer valence electrons are closer to the nucleus, it makes atomic radius smaller. Okay, so for example, if we could just draw some lines in the sand, it's not certainly going to be accurate in terms of true size, but it will give us an indicator. This would be what we'd be looking at for fluorine's outer electrons, and way up here is going to be, or let's compare boron, that's a little better since they're p electrons as well, borons are going to be much further away. Okay, and shielding has a, a slight effect, but not as much of an effect as we would see across the group. Now I just need to define the terms for you. We're not going to look at these trends. Um, ionization energy, there's a couple of key things you need to note here. Ionization is the energy, is the energy required to remove an electron, so the electron's a product. And notice it's from the gaseous element to form an ion. So the first ionization energy takes away one electron. The second ionization energy starts with that ion and then removes a second electron. So we're looking at removing successive electrons one at a time. Now it's from a gaseous ion to go from plus one to plus two and then that the next energy would be from the plus two ion, and we would again remove an electron from the plus two ion, and note that it's in the gaseous phase. Very, very important. You need to memorize, you need to learn this. And that would be the plus three ion, and so on and so forth. There's going to be many more than that. And notice that because you are breaking an attractive force, Whenever you break an attractive force like a bond or the attraction of an electron, it's to the nucleus, it's going to require energy. So these are going to be always endothermic or positive energy processes. It requires energy to break an attraction, just like it requires energy to pull two magnets apart. Now we're going to be looking also at electron affinity in your inquiry. Now, it is like ionization energy in that we, are, we must be starting with a gaseous element or ion, but notice this time we're adding an electron, so that electron is actually going to be the reactant this time, and a gain in electrons makes something more negative Okay, notice too that as the size, and I'm going to show you an animation on this, that the radius of an atom compared to the radius of a negative, a negative ion, an anion, the anion's bigger than the atom. For a cation in the previous, we'll see that the radius of the atom, and you're going to have to justify this, is greater than the radius of a cation. And I'm not gonna give away the justification. You have to figure that out. Okay, and this most often gives off energy because you're forming an attractive, uh, but not always. There's a few cases where it doesn't. Now, here's where it's a little crazy with electron affinity. Affinity means a liking for or a desire for. And um, that's you would think that's a positive thing, to have an affinity. But because our electrons are negative little things that we have a liking for. The energy here is typically negative. So here's what gets confusing. As you increase the affinity for an electron, the desire that an atom has for an electron, you make the 
electron affinity in joules more negative. And if books would just keep it as this, it'd be okay. But unfortunately, some people report these as positive values. I work very hard not to do that. I focus on the true negative joules that are involved. So an increase in an affinity or a liking for is going to be a more negative electron affinity. And fluorine likes electrons more than anything in the whole wide world. And so we would expect fluorine to have one of the most negative electron affinities. So we'll be looking at that in your inquiry. Now, uh, scientists have also developed a scale that is a relative scale. And man, I'm over 10 minutes. I'm sorry. It's a relative scale where fluorine is for our noble gases fall back down to zero because they have no desire for electrons. So this is simply a relative scale. Not There's no units associated and we're going to be shooting to fluorine and you're going to find why in your inquiry okay and you will be given these tables you will not have to memorize those but i liked how this one kind of gave you a sense of a 3d in that concept okay well i'm a little over my time uh, i'll have to pay you back with some time later on maybe some good quality tutoring time will will pay off for this so until then this is signing off.